Hello and welcome in Aeromind headquarters here in Poznan, Poland. Uh, in this video we are going to talk about the Atmon FL, the flying gas laboratory that has been designed for the uni unique H520 series of drones. Uh, this is the second video of the series, we invite you to watch the first one if you haven't already. Um, like I mentioned, this device has been designed with the H520 series in mind, it's fully compatible uh, with the uh, older H520, but it's also fully compatible with the H520e. Now, the very uh, exciting thing about the Atmon is that it has been certified by Unique, uh, officially certified by Unique, uh, to be fully safe and fully integrated with, with uh, this drone, so you can use it without worrying about any issues with integration, uh, with warranty, uh, it's all been taken care of. Uh, Unique has tested this this uh, device, and the results are positive. Um, so in this in this video, we are going to talk about how to use the Atmon, how to install it, how to take care of it. Um, the most important thing is that you don't have to use it on the drone. It's a fully standalone device. It has its own uh, GPS uh, and battery and. Uh, all sorts of uh, measurement uh, units um, so you don't you can use it maybe mounted to a car or mounted uh, in, a, in a stationary way for for stationary measurements uh, it all depends on you um, and the needs for measurements that you have so probably the first thing that uh, you will do after uh, plugging the Atmon to the charger is installing uh, the mounting rail. Uh, the mounting rail is installed on top of the drone. Uh, it's important to note it does not interfere with the uh, GPS unit on the drone. This has been tested not only by us uh, and Nanosense but also by Unique. Uh, so there is nothing to worry about here. The important thing is to mount the rail exactly like the manual says. Uh, the, the sizing and dimensions have been calculated in a particular way, so this is the, this is the one and only way to uh, install it. Uh, once the rail is installed on the drone, uh, you should wait at least 24 hours for the glue to set in. Um, and after that, you can uh, start using your Atmon FL. Uh, to do that, the first thing that you do is turning the unit on. It uh, usually takes a bit uh, for it to initialize. And then you install it on the rail by pressing together the buttons that are on the side, which allows you to put it in the rail and then slide it up to the very end until it clips. The next step is uh, plugging in the transmitter to your computer. Uh, this transmitter is uh, fully compatible with any device that has a USB-A port and works on Windows 7, 8 or 10. So this could be a tablet, uh, this could be a laptop, uh, it doesn't really matter as long as it has USB and a uh, Windows 7, 8 or 10 system. In the meantime, you can install the Atmon Ground Unit software, which is uh, delivered uh, along with, uh, with your Atmon unit on a pen drive. Um, this software is very easy to use, uh, so after you plug everything in, you turn the software on. The only thing we need to do now is to choose a COM port from the list. In my case there is only one available, so I know that this is going to be the correct one. Now I click connect and it's done. Now the Atmon is communicating with the transmitter and the data is being displayed on the screen of the app. So in the ground uh, unit software uh, you have all kinds of data visible at first sight. You have readings of uh, each, uh, each, each sensor at the same time. You can also see uh, a display, a graph of 
the measurements from a particular sensor in time so you can see how it changed over time uh, you also have a display for the sum of all of the measurements combined uh, you have information about uh, the GPS position about the current date and time temperature um, relative humidity atmospheric pressure as well as uh, all the readings from all the sensors installed inside of the device if you need to uh, log all the measurements uh, that you are doing uh, it's very easy first you need to go uh, to the settings menu uh, you click log to file you choose a folder in which uh, the file will be saved and then you turn on the logging over here Now all of the measurements will be saved in a, a CSV uh, format, which is a text format with comma separated values. That's where the CSV comes from. Uh, the comma separated values format is uh, very versatile. It can be imported to a variety of different kinds of software, uh, including, for example, uh, Microsoft Excel uh, or uh, OpenOffice Calc. Um, once you have the data, you can post-process it uh, in any kind, in any form uh, you want. So there is there are multiple possibilities here. So after saving uh, the data, uh, you can uh, retrieve it from the computer. It's not the data is not stored inside of the device. It's it's stored on the hard drive of the computer. However, in the future, it will be possible uh, to send the data from the Atmon straight into the cloud, uh, which would be very uh, convenient. So once you have all of these things done, you are basically set and ready to go uh, to take measurements. Now, there are a couple of things that you should know about uh, maintaining the good technical shape of your Atmon. Um, one of these, uh, the first thing would be uh, calibration. Calibration is uh, is done using using special calibration gases, and this has to be done uh, at the headquarters of Nanosense uh, in uh, Tarnowo Podgórne near Poznań, here in Poland. Uh, this uh, this calibration should be done either once a year or once uh, once in uh, in a half a year, depending on how heavy uh, the use is. Uh, the second important thing is uh, uh, maintaining the good shape of the battery and the sensors. You have to remember that your Atmon shouldn't, uh, shouldn't be uh, discharged, the, the battery in the Atmon shouldn't be discharged and as particularly it shouldn't be kept uh, in a discharged state uh, because this hurts the battery but this also hurts the sensors. So from time to time uh, you need to uh, charge the unit even if you are not using it. Um, this time is more or less uh, a month. You should control it in more, more or less once, uh, once a month, which would be uh, a good and healthy time. Now, the third thing to remember is that you shouldn't overload the sensors. So if you put the Atmon in a particularly harsh environment with a very dense uh, smoke, for example, and you keep it there for, for a long time, then the sensors could get clogged in a way, uh, basically hurting uh, the accuracy of the measurements. Uh, so you want to omit situations with very, very high concentrations uh, of gases. Among our customers, one of the most common uses for the Atmon FL uh, are chimney tests. Uh, this is mm, usually done by the municipal police and the idea is that you approach a chimney uh, in a house, in a, in a private house or any chimney really, uh, and you 
take a sample of the smoke that is coming from uh, uh, coming out from the chimney and based on um, detection of certain gases you can detect whether or not the person is burning illegal fuels such as plastics um, rubber tires uh, or any kind of uh, illegal illegal fuels so to speak uh, that cause air pollution and smog. Uh, now approaching a chimney uh, is uh, is not exactly something that most drone users do very often and with how the Atman works uh, we have worked out a particular method to do that. Um, so as you know here are the motors of the drone and they are creating an air current airflow that goes like this. So that means that the air from, uh, from above the drone is being sucked, uh, sucked down, it goes around the sensor and then uh, down to the bottom. So the best way, if this is the drone and this is the chimney and the smoke is going somewhere in here, the best way to approach a chimney is not to go as close as possible but find a place where you can keep a safe, uh, nice safe distance from the chimney and, and the house, approach the smoke from below and let the propellers suck in the smoke uh, around the sensor. This is a really good method that we've already tested with municipal uh, police here in Poland and it gives good results. Uh, if your Atman is equipped with the right sensors, uh, you can quite easily uh, monitor uh, the ingredients of the smoke and therefore you, you could verify if that person is burning uh, illegal materials. One of the most interesting and exciting features of the Atman FL is that it has a modular design. So what this means is that uh, basically it has two base sensors that are the particulate matter sensors um, that are common to every Atmon FL but apart from that there are six slots for gas sensors. Now every user can choose whichever sensors that they like from the list of available sensors uh, and choose them to have them in their Atmon unit. But that's not all. You can buy an additional, uh, any additional amount of sensors from the available list and you can interchange them yourself. Uh, it's, uh, it's a quite simple procedure. Uh, in fact, it can be done in the field. So in a matter of uh, two or three minutes, you can equip your Atmon with uh, whole new spectrum of, uh, of sensors if you, uh, if you need so. This is, uh, I think, particularly uh, useful for uh, firefighters that um, have encountered any chemical emergencies. Uh, perhaps they could use the drone to uh, approach the, the, the place of the emergency, take a look at it, uh, maybe they could devise what kind of substances could be there, could be leaked. Uh, they come back with the drone, they install the Atmon with, uh, uh, with the sensors um, that would detect the, the, the gases, the substances that the firefighters are thinking might be there. They don't have to send a man in there, they send the drone, the drone takes measurements, they see them, they see the, the the measurements in real time on the computer uh, so they can verify if the air is safe to breathe, if the place is safe to send the men in and continue the intervention. Um, there's of course uh, a lot of other uses for the uh, interchangeable uh, sensors. For example, um, an administration unit for a local, local government that is, uh, d uh, that is responsible uh, for uh, the protection of the environment uh, could monitor uh, any industrial sites that are in the area and knowing what a particular industrial site does, what a particular uh, factory is doing, they could 
uh, install uh, sensors that are equivalent to uh, potential pollutants emitted by those factories and use the drone uh, to control if these pollutants are released in the air. So uh, with, the, with the wide variety of sensors available there are a lot of things that could be controlled uh, and measured this way. So this is all for this video. Uh, we have been talking about how to configure and use the Atmon FL on the H520 series drones. Thank you for your attention and I'll see you in the next video.